Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot for November 2nd. Now, I am recording this on the 1st, um, and this one's for you, Rita. So I got an email from Rita just a few minutes ago, and she wanted to know what the blank is going on with Mansion. For those of you who may not have seen it, um, he held a press conference on Monday afternoon basically saying, uh, you know, I want this bipartisan infrastructure bill passed, and if you think that you're going to hold the um, Build Back Better plan back and not pass what I want passed, well, you're not going to hold me hot. Like, honestly, what an idiot. So he is obviously having a temper tantrum. I don't know what the hell his problem is. Now, we do know that Manson wanted to do two things. He wanted to lower the cost of the bill, and for some reason, he wants to slow the whole process down. Now, I'm not sure what game he's playing. Um, Biden's approval rating is dropping and dropping. And none of you need to panic about that because it's not going to last. But um, it certainly seems like something's going on with him. So I'm going to ask a few pendulum questions first. And then I'm going to do a bit of a dive on um, Mansion. And we're going to see how things stand. What the heck is going on with him? Also, before I forget, um, I've been getting a few comments that the sound isn't good. There seems to be a problem. Some people are saying it's fine. Other people are saying they're having a hard time um, hearing me. It's muffled. I've, I've moved the mic down. I'm hoping perhaps that might help. Um, <clears throat> but please remember, those of you who haven't been subscribers for, for a long time, um, my voice tends to go just wonky in the fall. It's a season change. And so this is where you're going to start seeing me drinking like cups of tea and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm doing what I can, um, but it may just boil down to like my, you know, my voice doesn't like November. Okay, let's get started here. <clears throat> okay, so pendulum. All right, so it's going side to side. It's ready to answer. I actually want to start first with um, the Supreme Court and the case they're hearing about the, the Texas um, abortion thing. So, so this is my understanding that it looks as if the problem with the bill, according to the Supreme Court, is not the ban. It is the sort of vigil anti aspect of it, right? Because there's that thing in there about how, you know, they can just sue anybody who, um, you know, does this. And, and what it does is it shifts all the responsibility, first of all, on people who don't have any reason to they're not law enforcement because just the average person can say, well, I know that doctor did this and so, you know, I'm, I want him sued. Um, so it puts that really heavy burden on the courts. But what was most fascinating to me, and I just heard little bits of it, was that um, Kavanaugh asked how it is that this case, this ruling, this this law that they want to, you know, put into effect or this um, precedent, how it is that they could then not use that same kind of precedent to do the same thing when it comes to gun laws, which was really interesting, right? So he's all about, listen, if we do this for abortion, because this is what you want, the other side could do this for gun laws, you're not going to want that. So that was really interesting. And I know that on Friday's video, I was getting a no and um, that, or that Texas, they were going to rule with Texas. And I don't have all the jargon, jargon exactly correct. So when I say rule, well, I, it's like the verdict, what it, what it is they're ultimately going to end up saying. So because oral arguments have started, I want to take another look at that and see if I can get some clarity. We're also going to take a look at Virginia. Um, uh, before we uh, dive into to Manson. Okay, let's go. Okay, so side to side, we're good to go. Okay, so. Is the Supreme Court going to come out in favor of, rule in favor of, Texas? Is Texas going to get what they want? Okay, so now we're getting a no. 
Now, when I did this earlier, I also asked this question. Um, is Texas going to continue, however, to push for this really limited abortion ban, like the six-week? Yeah. So I think that was where the mix-up was coming, right? They're, they'll probably just bring another case, or they're going to uh, make it a very narrow ruling. Um, and I don't quite know what the technicalities of that would be, whether they could just rule on this section and say, but this one stands, or this one come back and talk to us. Um, but that's what it looks like. It looks like sort of that component of um, just people off the street can start bringing lawsuits against people that they think, you know, aren't doing the right thing. That's the part that's going to get, I think, squashed. Um, somebody also um, in the comment section made a comment, and I, now I can't remember what reader it is. I apologize. I think it was Linda G. who had said that Amy Coney Barrett um, would be leaving the court within a couple of years due to some some sort of a health problem. So I want to take a look at that. And I'm, I'm not trying to um, second guess or question another reader's answer. I just want to see if I can get confirmation. So let's ask the question this way. Um, somewhere in the year 2023 or 2024, is it very likely, is there a high percentage of likelihood that Amy is going to leave the court for health concerns? All right, so that's a yes. That's a good, strong yes. Okay. All right. Um, I have been checking and checking about Terry in Virginia. I know that Biden's rating is low. It's something like 42% approval rating in Virginia. Uh, you know what? And I mean, I'm sorry. I blame a whole bunch of that on, you know, Manson and cinema because they are putting so many blocks in Biden getting done what he wants to done that Biden is looking ineffectual to people who do not understand how your government works. Okay, I'm sorry, but he only has so much wiggle room with the Senate so evenly matched. Okay, and, and you know, yes, I know there's two independents that they're going to caucus with the Democrats, but, it, you know, just go, you know, give me artistic license when I say 50% Democrats, 50% Republicans. Terry, is Terry going to win? The race in Virginia, the governor's race in Virginia, is he going to be the next governor of Virginia? That's like a really strong yes, people. Okay. Are the polls we're looking at, are they, are they wrong? Are they, are they just wrong? Yeah, so somehow, um... You know, I don't know. And let's just ask this one. Is there going to be a really strong voter turnout? Yeah. Okay. So, again, it feels like people who, um, whether that's independents or liberals, um, are just sort of done. And I think that they really don't like some of the stuff that the Republican candidate is spouting. Um, is the infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill, are they going to be voted on jointly? Yes. Of course, there are they going, okay, are they going to pass the House? Yes. Is it going to pass the Senate? Yes. Is that going to happen in the month of November? Okay. Can we anticipate Biden's approval rating starting to climb um, as we move towards the end of the year, November into December? Yes. Yes. 
Um, so I don't know how many of you caught it on Rachel um, Meadows. Um, I think it was Thursday. It could have been Friday. Um, they were talking about that server. Um, you know that server from this bank in, in Russia? And it was pinging off of servers, um, Trump servers. I think it was campaign servers. I, I'm pretty sure that was it. Or, or maybe it was his company servers, but there was this pinging thing going back and forth and nobody could make any sense of it. Well, apparently now they're saying that a significant number of people um, within the Trump circle, um, there was something like 140 contacts between these two things. So this is not some random... Um, sort of technical glitch in, you know, cyber world. Um, is there considerable concern now that, let me ask the question, is there considerable concern now that um, this information is starting to get uncovered? And so now there really appears to be a very strong connection. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And... Is that going to be yet one more piece of the puzzle that, you know, ends up crashing Trump? Yes. Is the January 6th commission going to be able to release information with clarity, specificity, you know what I mean? Um... So that even some of those really red Republicans, not the Trumpers, the other ones, who say, oh, we don't like Trump, but we love his policies, like those kind of people, are they going to actually be able to understand exactly how destructive Trump was to the country? Yeah. So I guess the easier way to ask that question is, is the January 6th commission going to drop a few significant bombs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, since we're going to read on him. Is Joe Manson like power tripping? Is that what's going on with him? Okay, no. All right. Is he getting a, a lot of pressure from his constituents to vote for the Build Back Better? He is. Is he risking his own um, popularity or his own political career in West Virginia, I think that's where he's from, um, by taking the stand he's taking. Okay, so yes, he is. So then why is he doing it? Um, is he still getting, or is he continuing to get intense pressure from his donors? Yes. Was um, what would be yesterday's when you see this was Monday's press conference a result of him simply being incredibly frustrated? Yep. Okay. And is he starting to feel threatened or pressured in a way that he hasn't been to a degree he hasn't been before? Yes. Okay. So I guess he doesn't like what's going on, right? I guess he's not happy because he's not. I don't know, getting rave reviews for his crap. All right. Let's take a look, shall we? Let's just take a look. Oh, for those of you who are wondering as I'm watching this cat walking towards me, um, Jerry and Atticus are going to be coming for a visit. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be kind of the first full week of November or the beginning of the second, but it's going to be in that time frame. And um, so 
Jerry knows that he's like all about needing to make some cameos and say hi to people. So there will be a, a pet parade uh, that takes place within the next, I don't know, couple weeks. Okay. All right, come on down. I have a question. See Nova's having a nap. His little window seat. One more. Good. All right. Um, what's going on with Manson? What's going on with Mansion? What's going on with Mansion? we go let's find out oopsie all right so we're starting with the ten of swords that can't be good the world queen of swords queen of pentacles ten of cups okay so this is actually um one of those times that the, the cards are really sort of clear in terms of the pictures so, this is where he's at. This is representing Joe, okay? Ten of Swords. So, he is literally sort of getting pressure left, right, and center from all directions. He's getting pressured by his colleagues. He's getting pressured by his constituents. Those two groups want him to do what's right. Then he has his donors who are uh, pressuring him to sort of hold the line. And, oh, oh, thank you. That's really interesting. Okay, so what I just got told was that some of the donors are, like, really okay with Biden's approval numbers tanking as a result of this drawn-out nonsense because The Republican policies suit them better. So, you know, they don't like some of these this taxing stuff that, you know, Biden looks like he could be doing. Um, they don't like some of this stuff, and they're really pushing hard. And, it, you know, again, this is the thing, right? They, they want to seem, and I'm talking like big, kind of, you know, oil, um, big pharmaceutical, like the big, big industries. It's like they want to appear magnanimous, right? They want to appear to have democratic principles, but they want to run their businesses like a Republican. So he seems to be getting it sort of from both sides. The reality, however, is this nonsense that he is spewing is going to come to an end. And when all is said and done, he is going to have gotten a couple things he likes and some stuff he doesn't. And he's just literally going to need to, honestly, um, he's going to be like carrying, yeah, carrying the, um, the burden of the game he has played, if that makes sense, right? So some of this stuff, like when it goes through and everybody goes, oh, okay, you know, we got it and that's great and people start to settle down, there are still going to be those who go, you know what, you were playing games and accusing everybody else of playing those same games and he's going to have a hard time, I think, actually uh, getting past this. It looks like he may need to, when this is said and done, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually maybe starts uh, hiding out a little bit, maybe taking a bit of a lower profile, all right? This is telling me, the Queen of Swords is very, very often my Kamala card, and so this is telling me that she will make the deciding vote, okay? 
And from that, there is going to be Queen of Pentacle energy, which is nurturing and caring. And so that component is absolutely going into in effect. Okay, it's going to, things are going to start moving in a way so that um, a lot of the stuff that's in the Build Back Better bill is going to be able to move forward. And listen, not all of it, but you know what? This is the thing, and this is the thing everybody has to really, really remember, is you need to ensure that the Democrats hold on in 2022. They cannot lose any seats anywhere. Not in the House, not in the Senate. They need to get more. That's that. Because they will then be able to start adding bits and pieces along the way because they're not going to hit as much opposition. You know, this is kind of like, let's get this through, get our foot in the door. And as long as people vote the way they're supposed to vote, instead of, you know, voting in terms of we, the collective we, and what's good for the collective we, as opposed to me, um, they're going to be able to continue to quietly expand on some of the stuff that was, um, you know, taken off the plate, so to speak. But you got to remember, this is dependent on how people vote. But ultimately, I mean, you've got the Ten of Cups here. So ultimately, it's looking like the country is going to end up being okay. Things are going to move through and there's going to be a lot of emotional relief and a lot of sort of, you know, contentment and happiness just on the fact that families are going to be able to start being taken care of a little bit better. They're going to have some, you know, at least a little bit more flexibility. The infrastructure thing is going to go through. And so that's going to create those, you know, uh, middle income jobs that, you know, have some stability to them. All right. Let's drill down on Manson a little bit. Yeah. Aw, oh, poor guy. So, you know, he's trying to appear like he's independent and he's whatever. But the reality is, he is up to his eyeballs in um, money that comes from, and, I'm not, and I am mindful of, of the daughter and the pharmaceutical deal and all the money she made. But this is about, as opposed to this, like, being the independent, strong female, this, this card is literally reading, like, somebody who is trying very hard to keep what they have um, in place, intact. But listen, they're listening to the wrong information. They're listening to the wrong people. They're not listening. He's not listening to his constituents. He is listening to those people who he believes are going to control and dictate his future. And, you know, how do uh, big donors, right? Give me lots of money. The next election comes up. And I'm not even sure, honestly, when he's up for re-election. I have a feeling it might be 2024. Um... But I could be wrong on that. But, it, it, you know, the point is, is he's, he's looking long term. And you know what? I, you know, I, I was just going to say, I'm not so sure he's actually going to run for another term. I think the writing might be on the wall that maybe um, he might have cooked his own goose. You know, and maybe. Um, some of those people in his state are not going to be so anxious. And I know that it's a red state. And so the question is, you know, well, are they going to then vote in a Republican senator? And energetically, I have to tell you, I'm hearing a great big no. So right now, you know, he's stressed, he's anxious, he's worried. And, and what you saw at that press conference was him, frankly, being a bit of an you know, the appendage that sits between the, your lower back and your upper thighs, okay? Um, he's just being that because he was lashing out because, you know, he feels picked on. Poor guy. Wow. He feels picked on. Hmm. He's facing a lot of scrutiny and a lot of pushback. And, you know, i got to say, he deserves it. Ultimately, he's going to lose. 
I don't know what that means. Is he going to lose his career? Is he going to lose some of his donor support? Is he going to lose some of his constituents? Is he actually going to have to walk away? But either way, he has some significant heartache coming down the road for him. He really, really does. All right, so based on what I am seeing now, it looks as if this thing is going to come together. And you know what? I could be wrong, but it seems to me that there was sort of a date on the infrastructure bill that it had to pass by. And I can't help but wondering if that isn't part of what motivated that little press conference is he's running out of time because he wants the, you know, the infrastructure package passed now. And he doesn't want it tied to. Well, that's just too darn bad because, you know, you're one of a whole bunch of people who don't happen to agree with you. Um, and while he may have the ability to drag his feet, ultimately he will drag his feet to his own detriment. So I don't see, um, I, it, the pendulum definitely said they were going to pass together and, uh, and they were going to pass. So let's all be optimistic. Let's hang on to that. And uh, keep our fingers crossed for Virginia and that governor's race, because that's important. And um, always remember, always, always remember, you need to focus on what you want, not on what you're afraid of, okay? Because fear is a powerful, powerful motivator. And so when... You get locked into, I don't want this, this terrifies me, this is scary, this is going wrong. You need to gently push all that away and replace it with positive thoughts that um, imply that the deed is already done. Okay, so Terry's going to make an amazing governor when he wins the election this week um, because of um, Congress's success Biden's popularity is on the upswing because Congress did the right thing the infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill have passed and millions upon millions of people are going to benefit for that. And for that, we are grateful. Always, always try to remember to keep your thoughts positive. Don't fall into the fear trap because man alive, that fear is powerful. That's how you got Trump. Okay. Remember what I've always said, the universe doesn't actually hear negatives. So I don't want Trump to be president translated into I want Trump to be president. Think about that. Until next time, take care, be well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.